Hello. Welcome to Word on Wednesday. How you doing? You know what? I'm a couple minutes late today. You all should have seen me just um, flying around here. I was like, well, that's interesting. While well, I was out of town, we got my video light is gone. Um, I wonder where a hairbrush is around here. Okay. So I was telling um, Pastor Ben here, which he's such a good friend of mine. I'm so glad he's on here. I was just sharing with him before we came live. I said I had to find a hairbrush. I had to find <laughs> lights because um, I got teenagers and kids that, um, you know, what's mine is theirs, right? So anyway, thank you guys for jumping on here today. We are seriously excited about what God might do um, for your life today and through you and to you and for you because God loves you so much. You are so valuable. And so I felt that right off the bat, God wanted you to know that your life matters. What you're doing right now, I'm just feeling prophetically just to share this, what you're doing right now might seem like, am I getting anywhere? Is this really making a dent in the kingdom? Is this really worth anything. And so I just felt to encourage you today that you are making headway. All right. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Sometimes when we're so inundated in our own life, you know, you're just so immersed in all the details of your own life. It can almost feel like you lose track, right? You lose track of how far you've come and the progress you've made. But I felt this morning right off the bat to encourage you, you're making progress. Keep going one step at a time, whatever that might be. It might just be with your family. It might be, I feel like somebody on here has a teenager who you are thinking, is this even helping? Like I'm praying, I'm taking communion over this kid. I'm, you know, taking special time to really connect with them. And you're just not feeling like it's working. Okay. But a lot of the stuff that we do comes in seed form and then all of a sudden you look up and here comes that green shoot up out of the soil and things start, you know, really blossoming. So I just want to encourage you to keep going. So I am so excited that I have Pastor Ben on here today. We're going to end up praying for you. We're going to be prophesying over the people jumping on here live today, maybe give some corporate words. But what I wanted to do right off the bat is I've had extensive conversations with Pastor Ben about this, and I just felt like if he could come on here and speak to you and really release authority over the men and even, even to encourage the women that this women's movement, and I don't mean just her voice, by the way, I mean what God is doing on the earth through women. It really is an era before us that God is shooting women out like an arrow. And sometimes, especially if we've been raised in church, we can think, oh, a women's movement. That's the time for the men to figure out how to take care of the kids and, and all that's good, right? But sometimes it's kind of like an invitation for the men to step away rather than step in. Yeah. And what I believe God is doing, and Ben, I'm so excited for you to share this, but what I believe God is doing is he is setting up a divine collaboration between men and women. And I believe that the model that we're under is an Esther Mordecai model. What do I mean by that? Well, when you read the book of Esther, you know, you kind of see Esther, right? We just kind of follow Esther all the way through. And it's just a dynamic story because we're watching the arrow, right? We're watching an arrow fly through the air and it's Esther. Esther's name is on the arrow. It's her voice. It's her, you know, like she's going to do this and she's going to die for it type of thing. Right? So that's cool, but we have to also look at the great collaboration that was happening between her and Mordecai. See, Esther went to the king, and in those days, you know, you didn't just go knock on the door of the king's of, of his room and say, "Hey, I got to talk to you." You know, he the king had to summon his wife to talk to him, and so she couldn't just approach the king. But Mordecai said, hey, listen, Esther, and, and, you know, and what's so awesome is Esther 414 is such a famous verse for such a time as this. But do you know it was, that Mordecai, it, it was Mordecai that said it? That's right. It was Mordecai that said it. We're watching the arrow. So it's like, there goes Esther. But you know what? Mordecai said it. And what did he yeah. say? He said, Esther, here's the situation. The, the Jews... And you are a Jew, Esther. 
are going to be killed. Haman has ordered a decree for all the Jews to be killed. Okay. And here's the deal. If you don't say something to the king, because the king didn't know she was a Jew, she had, she hid her um, identity. Yeah. And which, 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 by the way, was, was the wisdom that Mordecai gave her. So that was, right. um, so and I, Sorry, I interrupted yeah, you. No, but, no, no. Um, I, I can't wait to. Like I, 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 I reread Esther this morning, and just okay. stuff just jumped off the page to me. And I want, I, and and you know what, Pastor Ben? Here's the key: is I think we all need to go read the Book of Esther because that's what Bob and I just did. Because we're like, if we're really in this Esther era, which we believe wholeheartedly, we better go back to the book and let's yeah. find some keys and some treasures. So I'm just going to unleash you here in just a second, and I want you to just go no. for it. Just, just to kind of give us some context is Esther 414, that famous for such a time as this, what Mordecai said was, here are your options. Like, go read it. It's a pretty long verse. It doesn't say for such a time as this only. There's, a, there's several yeah. things inside that one verse. But he says, you know, here's the situation. You have an option, Esther. Mm -hmm. If you don't go tell the king that Haman is going to take out the Jews, then God will raise up a solution from another place because God loves the Jews. He's going to raise up a solution. He's going to raise up somebody to rescue this people group. But just so you know, you're not going to make it. <laughs> like He's kind of saying just because you're queen doesn't mean you're going to slip under the radar. You're going to also be taken out. So Esther, can I present this to you? What if, what if God put you in the palace for this, moment like what if you're not just winning a beauty contest you yes. actually have been teed up to save a nation and that's the very reason you're in the palace in the first place and so you know he he gave esther an option which was die or do something about it <laughs> yeah. it was awesome right so i think about this ben and i and by the way side note if you do not know ben rose i am so glad you're on here today to know him I've had his wife, Heather, on before. They run the collective church. They're lead pastors of the collective church in, in Tigard, Oregon, which is the church that Bob and I and Ben and Heather came together a little over seven years ago to plant this church. It's been such a joy. They are running this church. They're doing an incredible job. But it's not just a Tigard, Oregon church. It's a worldwide church. And we fully expect to see people plant churches all over the nation. And maybe you'll be a collective church. Who knows? Maybe you'll be a church that, you know, offshoots and plans from the church that you go to now. But I just know this, that God wants family inside the local church all over the nation. Yeah. And some of you, I believe, are getting the tug on the sleeve to potentially be one of those people. But um, Ben and Heather also run Cross the Island. And it is such a significant piece right now that we get free and we help our children through the scary topic of sexual discipleship because uh, our sexual identity, as you know, is at an all time assault right now. And so Ben and Heather, what they do is they help parents disciple their families in sexual discipleship, right? It's not just here's, you know, five minutes of the birds and bees. Good luck to you. Like there is some discipleship that can take place, but they also help marriages who don't feel that they are deeply connecting. There could be a pornography issue. There could be whatever, but it, it's usually trauma and some things that have happened in our lives before we even came together. So they are, I call them the marriage ninja ninjas. They are so anointed at helping people connect and giving tools. So we want you to go check them out at crosstheisland.com. Crosstheisland.com. They have a course that is um, like an, they have a course that you can take. You can plug in at any time. Go look and see your options there because we don't want to just free a nation without freeing the family and the marriage. It all works together. So these guys are incredible at that. Um, but one thing that I wanted you, Pastor Ben, to do today is I want you to speak into where you believe men fit. What is their role in the next, who knows how long this is going to be. I don't know if it's a decade that God is shooting women out. I just know that God is shooting women out and their voices out. 
where are the men in the story? Because if they don't enter the story, the women can't go. Yeah. Esther has to have Mordecai. So what does this look like? What did you grab from the book of Esther? I just want you to start talking to us and we can go back and forth if you want to, but I really yeah, want to I'd love, I'd love to go back and forth. I got my Her okay. Voice ministry hat on here, of course. Um, Cause obviously I believe, you know, I believe in this ministry very much um, to tell us die ministry and the collective church are like, little like twins, right? We're born from the same womb. We have the same DNA and we overlap in a lot of different areas. And so my wife and I serve, um, you know, Heather serves in an official capacity with Tetelestai and her voice as worship, the worship pastor, the worship leader. And then, um, well, I, role wise, Jenny, what's my role? I just, I, I'm just there. I support, I help out, I do whatever. I just well, do whatever, whatever I can. Me. Let me just tell you this about Ben. Okay, let me just tell you this. You might find Ben on a Sunday morning at church preaching. You might find him on the guitar. You might find him up in the media room. You might, because <laughs> the thing about yeah, Ben, the reason he never gets a single role is because he is literally multi-talented. I don't know if that's your upbringing or just how God wired you, probably how God wired you, but he was raised under some incredible pastors, Mike and Dee Dee Rose in Juneau, Alaska, but he's been a youth pastor. He's been on every instrument, you know, up there. He's... And so we never give Ben like one role because we're yeah. like, hey, come over here. We have an AV issue. Hey, so for this year, um, I, your role for her voice in July is to really uh, kind of project lead the AV piece. And so, I mean, he's an incredible preacher. He can help your marriage. He can put together AV and lighting. It's crazy what you can do. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to brag about you, Ben, <laughs> because I am not over exaggerating when I say this. It is absolutely incredible what you can do. It's it's really amazing. So what Ben will do is he'll come to me and say, I think this is my assignment for for this upcoming event, or I think this is my assignment here. And it's and he's always spot on with that. So we're so incredibly thankful. And then Heather, we have planted her firmly in leading worship. So she's actually taken worshipers from all over the nation, pulling them together and forming a day experience. Heaven's gonna open up. So you're yeah. gonna feel like it's gonna be amazing. So anyway, I, I just, I'll just I'll just give you like just the opener. The opener itself is going to be like I, it's goosebump, goosebump city, and more than goosebumps, it's anointing. Yeah, and I, I, it's just gonna be so anointed. And so um, I think I think people should should really get their expectations really really high, um, and say, well, I've I've been to her voice before, so I I know what this is like. You don't. Mm -hmm. um, so get you get your expectations really high on and not just from a production, but the production is going to um, the production value is going to mirror what God's doing. That's and right. so I think that's going to be, you know, God, God can use production, um, you know, to as, as, as it's anointed, you know, to to pull us in and to draw us closer to his heart and to his assignment. So, um, yeah, we just we love her voice ministry. We're all in. And I'm, I'm all in with seeing, um, you know, I believe that there's godly order. I, I, I don't believe this, you know, if you're a man or if your husband thinks this, this is at all diminishing the role of, of man or of the man, you've missed it. Um, this is actually just us getting into our proper lanes and assignment. And, um, you know, I believe that God is, has, has set up supernatural order. Uh, you know, I, I, even that there's there's statistics out there that I, that I've seen uh, recently where, you know, if if the man is is leading his household in spirituality, and really um, is is bringing his kids to church, like the percentages are are it's like ninety percent of the family is gonna gonna you know come to Jesus as compared to like so so we wow. you know we believe and I know Jenny believes this too we believe in the in proper in in order. And that this is not just like a well, the men didn't take up their mantle, so now the women we're 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 running forward and we're going to go without the men. I mean that that's that's the wrong mindset. But the mindset is this: is that for for too long, that um, because of man made ideas, um, that women's voices have been stifled, and they have they have been relegated to um, 
you know, to women's nights and to, you know, kind of a less, lesser than voices within the church. And we just believe that like the collective church would not be what it is today without the voices, you know, of, of Jenny and Heather and Tiffany and Shauna and Sarah Stortro and, um, April and Janelle. And I mean, we could go on and on Tiffany Kashuba and Rachel. I mean, we could just like Brenda, I could go on. Literally we could spend the rest of this time talking about uh, how, how the women at, at the collective church have impacted and, and, and the passion and the, um, the emotion that they carry and, and the, the, um, really the call to freedom and to be free. So I, I just, I, I'm so thankful for what God's doing. And, and I really do believe that God, I think it's bec- part of it, Jenny, is because women are under such assault right now in the world, yeah. like gender, um, like, you know, Matt Walsh's uh, documentary, we watched it with our families together over Thanksgiving, you know, what is a woman? With, with the world not even being able to define what a woman is right now with, um, you know, abortions, what's happening with, isn't it interesting? Um, my, my, this is my body. Isn't it interesting that that's what Jesus says in communion? And it's, so it's a demonic parody of, 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 of communion. This is my body, you know? Wow. And, and, and so, and so I, I think of, of, of sports, um, men are now becoming the women of the year. Um, yeah, it's men are being... obvious, right. It's kind of obvious that there's this, like, like I'm going to cross gender. So the women actually don't have a right to be women anymore. And the men don't have a right to be men anymore. Yes. Yeah. It's like and and so giant, like, let's it's, just it's so, it's so bizarre. And we're, so we're watching this, this happen and, and, so I think it's God's like, hey, I'm going to shoot these arrows out, these voices out, you know, and and I think about wounded wombs and, and the, what was wrapped around there and what was wrapped in, in that message of, you know, you know, with Tiffany and abortion and with all all the things that that women were supposed to be quiet about. Now we've just said, OK, you know what? Not only are we taking it out from under the rug, we're actually getting rid of the rug. There actually is no more rug. And, and so we are, you know, we're, we're into this, into this season where, you know, your voice and, and it's not just you, it's, it's, it's what I love about her voice is it's not just about one person. And, you know, so there are times when I'm like, when I get frustrated with Jenny and I'm like, Jenny, I, I want, I, you need to speak more. This is your event, but she is so the, the heart of this event is not look at me. The heart of this event is not, I'm going to build a platform for myself. Um, the heart of this event is really to awaken um, women to, to, to stop being on eggshells, to stop being, um, actually, let me, let me give you a couple things well, that men can do. This. I'm going to share this because I think this is just a, because I don't want you to move on from that very important point just yet. So I want to I want to endorse what you just said. Um, I was talking to Lisa Bevere a couple weeks ago. She's a great friend of mine. She'll be coming to her voice. She's just but you guys, she is carrying a word now for a couple of years. She had a dream that plays into this, but she's carrying a word for women. And here's the, the thing. And it, she just made me just realize, like, wow, what she said was when you get the women, meaning the enemy, you get the kids. Yeah. We're looking at this kid issue, right? We're like, what's happening in the schools and this yeah. whole transgender thing and what's happening? But she backed it up a step and God showed her it's because the women um, are muzzled, right? So I want, I just want to confirm what you're yeah. saying because what you're saying, because we have to get to the root of the matter. It's not what's wrong with these kids. It's like, okay, who is discipling these kids? Who, who in the home didn't tell their daughter, no, you're, you're not a boy, you're a girl. Tell me what, tell me your experience. Yeah. Tell me what you're thinking. Like somebody in the home, usually the mother, right. Is there tending to the heart of their children. So there has been this like muzzling of women. And I think it's to get to the kids, right. It's a, it's a genocide, but anyway, I just want to, I just want to stamp that yeah. because you're making a very good point. Yeah, that's good. I, I think too, we're, we're in such a, it's like, 
the the men the men aren't leading their home and, and this is not true of everybody but just kind of a blanket statement but you know a lot of men aren't in their rightful place um you know is spiritually leading the home and then but yet permission hasn't been given to the woman to take her place so it's like two two people are out of order and two two that both parents are out of place and it's like really the only form of discipleship is coming in like um, manners and grades and sports and, and we're discipling our kids in, in those things. And, and um, you know, you can talk to a lot of kids that, that can, you know, really espouse their, their parents' political views. You know, when, when a kid has a really strong political view, you know that it was not established in them by themselves. They're, they're parroting what their parents have said. And, and we want to teach our kids, you know, great worldviews as well. And we want to teach our kids, you know, world history and especially American history. And um, Christian nationalism actually isn't, isn't evil. Uh, God set up countries and borders and boundaries and God loves America and, and um, our nation is special. He, but he loves all nations of the world. Uh, and so, um, mm-hmm. but, but if it just stops there, um, I think that's where we have a problem. So I think it's, it's it's the men coming into their place, and that's why men, we need you at her voice this year. Come you know, on. if you're, you know, women, if you're if you're watching this right now, um, your husband your husband really needs to be here, and and he is invited to be here. I think it's really good for for men to see what God is doing, because uh, you know, obviously, that the men are going to be greatly impacted as well by the by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's just that just happens. Yes but also seeing what God is doing with the women and, and really reframing um, our view. Cause some of us grew up maybe in a really traditional religious mindsets and homes where, where, you know, and I do think there are some godly roles. I do think that over, overarching God gave us some roles. Jenny, you talked about the nurturing. Um, now, not every woman is the main nurturer of the home, you mm-hmm. know, um, but but there are there are some, you know how God God put us together. He said it's not good for man to be alone. It's, it's, it's the only time God ever said it something yeah. wasn't good in His creation. I have a question for you, and I'm just now thinking of this. And let's just explore something here. Do you like? Okay, so what I'm seeing right now is we have a devastation in our country. Right? We have this like, yeah. oh boy, like the kids don't know if they're girls or boys. Um, yeah. We have these kids that are like, I have pronouns now. And I, I've even heard the pronoun God because kids are now saying, well, I'm God. So we have this massive um, trauma in the nation, right? So here's my thought, Ben. And I don't want to totally generalize this, but let's pretend. Okay. That, okay, let's, let's go to Joplin, Missouri, 10 years ago, 12 years ago now. They had a huge tornado come through. Not leaving. And yeah, I'd be like, hey, where'd he go? Um, But 10 years, 12 years ago, they had this tornado come through and it affected so much of their city. The buildings were toppled, the whatever. I am going to bet my life on this one thing. The heavy labor, the cleanup, the rebuilding, the construction was mainly done by men because they're physically stronger and they're built to do that. That doesn't mean a woman can't come no. and pick a board and take it away. No. That doesn't mean a woman can't put a nail and a hammer together, you know, but I am willing to bet that the construction industry that the, you know, so this is how yeah. I see it is we have a devastation, like a tornado came through the country, just blew the family unit, but mainly kids. And this is a job for women to take the children and repair some hearts, just like it would be if we had a physical, not that men can't do those spiritual things because they can, Yeah. but here's the thing in Joplin, I have friends there who set up stations for food, for supplies. And these women were coming and doing what they could do. And the men were doing a lot of the heavy labor but they were co-laboring, yes. right? So it's not like, oh, I'm a girl. I can't lift, you know, all that. I, I'm not physically strong enough. So just let me know if you need help. I'll be at home. Like, I, I feel like the country is under a devastation 
and it's going to take men and women, but the 100%. women go out front in this prayer effort and, and men need to pray too, yes. but it's, it's like in the spirit, this is our heavy lifting yeah. for the children while the men come. And so what does that look like, Ben? What does it look like? Like at her voice, I just want them in the mix. I want them up in front. You're not standing at the wall. You're just up in the middle of this thing. Right. Um, but I also am wondering, I want you to answer this question, but I'm gonna have everybody online, everybody, unless you're driving. Okay. I want you to fill in the blank. When a man endorses my voice, when a man encourages my voice, when a man says, go for it, use your voice, it makes me feel, and I want you to fill in the blank. That's good. How does it make you feel when a man versus a woman, because a woman can say, go for it all day long, because we're going to capture the kids. We're going to get their hearts back in you know, a place of safety, but the fathers have to be there to yeah. say to the little princesses that had a, a seventh grader that had a girlfriend, the father has to be there, right? To say, you are not damaged goods. I'm not mad at you. I'm not disappointed in you. God's destiny is still on your life. Like, what is it I want? Okay. Everyone's saying right here, let's read these. I don't know if you can see that. You can see Yeah. Empowered, valued, strong, yeah, strong read those more off. confident. Um, powerful, confident in myself, supported, valued. Like I can conquer anything. That's huge. That's what Michelle is saying right there. Like I can conquer yeah. anything. Respected. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to dare to say that I can, when I endorse a woman's voice, that I can give them a measure of this, but I'm going to dare say that when a man does it, that's your covering, it's to a whole nother level. It's it's completely different. When Bob says to me, Jenny, you got this. I believe in you. It's like, I can do anything. It's like, I can't fail. When my girlfriend, like Tiffany comes along or Heather comes along and says, Jenny, you got this. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to go. But when a man says it, it's like, all right. You know, there's this, this confidence so how's that going to look, Ben? So I, I, I have a lot of thoughts here. Um, okay. Because I I always, um, like, I love, like, the the, the Edenic, pre, uh, um, Edenic theology, like, where, which is the Garden of Eden, you know, man and woman were given um, the role together yeah. to, to, to multiply to cultivate, to, to build the garden. And so they, they worked together, you know, in their strengths and their giftings. And, and so that's, that's the, really the picture of what I see of, of, of men and women working together. It's, it's, it's this one, you know, being disconnected or both, or both being disconnected from their roles because the man has not endorsed because he's not leading spiritually. So I think I see a couple things, but let me just, you know, 12, 13 years ago, well, actually, like 21 years ago, when Heather and I got married, um, I was so drawn to her uh, love for Jesus. You know, I was so drawn to, I remember there was times when she would come up and she would sing. I had her come up and sing when I was youth pastor. One time I was like, you need to come up, you sing. And she would sing and it would like, there were times it would be 20, 30 minutes and the whole atmosphere of the room would change. And it's like, poof, it would just get heavy, the presence of God. And it would be like, you know, angels in the room. And, and so I, and then she would speak and I would see her minister and I would just go, oh my gosh, like everything in me as a man. And I think a lot, there's a lot of men that are like this, but maybe they just don't know how to express it. I'm, a, I'm an external processor. And so I, um, which not all men are, you know, Jenny, I've told you this before, but Christine Potter, Don Potter's wife once told me, she, she looked at me, she said, Ben, you carry the woman heart of God too. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> she's like, it's a good thing. I was like, okay, great. Cause that sounds very emasculating, but no, it's strong. Okay, good. Um, so I, you know, I, I externally processed with her, but I would, I would see this greatness and I, I wanted her to to fly i just was like oh my gosh and so 
you know, one of the greatest joys of my life is seeing my wife. I don't want to hold her back and say, well, I have to let, no, I, I actually want to catapult her. I want to, I want to, you know, to hold the arrow and I want to shoot her um, far because I, man, I see greatness in my wife. I see, you know, like Bob sees in you, like, like so many of the husbands that are connected to these women on, online today, you know, they see you and, and, and they want, they want you to fly and they want you to, to go far and to, to be who God's called you to be. Here's, here's, here's the, where the disconnect was for me though, Jenny, Okay. is I, I had unconfessed sin in my life yeah. and what that was doing. And I didn't know this at the time because you're, you're you know, when you're in sin, you're in deception. Yeah. But what I was doing is I was, um, manipulating my wife because I was trying to hide. I was trying to hide sexual sin. So if she ever got the scent of it, if she ever sniffed it out, if she ever got close to it, I would throw her off. And, and, you know, me being good with words, I was able to manipulate and say, Oh no, Heather, you're no, you're, you're totally missing it. You know, she'd be like, are you something going on between you and, and her? It seems like, no, no, Heather. Oh. And so what, what started happening is she started to question her discernment. Now, this really grieves me to talk about this, but I feel like I, I, I need to talk about it. It's, it's actually yeah. quite embarrassing. Um, so I feel like one of the things that I was doing to stifle her voice was that I was um, not allowing God to work in me. And the, bypro the byproduct of that was she was very, very unsure because I made her feel crazy. And I made and I made her feel um, that she didn't have discernment, that she was totally like she's like, oh, I'm totally missing it. So so on one hand, Jenny, I'm, I'm telling her, I'm saying, Heather, fly. Why aren't you? And I, I remember I'd get mad at her sometimes. I'm like, why aren't you stepping out? Why? You know, you had an opportunity. Why didn't you sing there? Why didn't you, you know, take this or that? And, and she was she was so bound up because. A, not all of it was my actions, but a lot of it was because of the unhealth that I was bringing into the home. And she was, and I was not leading the home spiritually. I was not leading the charge. Now I was pastoring. I was doing, you know, I was trying to lead people spiritually, but I wasn't leading my home. And I think the byproduct of me not being in my identity and me not being strong was really stifling her voice. And what happened was when, and so I'm, I'm talking to, to, to men here too right now. Yeah. Um, what happened was, is when the Lord arrested my heart and, and I started to deal with the sin in my life, it brought a, and I started to lead, then I started to lead spiritually. I started to lead our children spiritually. I started to, to, to lead our family spiritually. Like I was the, I became the spiritual leader of the home. It gave her such a sense of peace in such a sense of, of, of strength and calm and, you know, an endorsement. So here I was asking her to fly and I was clipping her wings simultaneously. Well, she got her wow. wings back and she began to fly. And, you know, anyone that's been around Heather for the last seven years is like, she's a completely different person today than she was seven years ago. But I think a lot of that started with, with me stepping in, dealing with what I needed to deal with not sweeping it under the rug any longer. And so, um, so I, I see that and I see Jenny has sexual sin has actually, you know, because Mordecai was, was Esther's cousin, but he ended up raising her like a daughter. So yeah. there was a real, there was a love. It, it, Esther was not his daughter, but the Bible says that he raised her as he adopted her and he mm -hmm. raised her as a daughter. And so th there's a love you know, like Jenny, I, I, I love, I love you very much. I love the women on our core team very much. And God, because I, because I'm healthy and my sec, sexually and God's delivered me, I don't, I'm not weird about my care and my love for, for the women in my church and for, the, yeah. for, do you know what I'm saying? So I think what, what, what sexual brokenness does in the home and sexual brokenness does in the church is it makes men really awkward around women because they don't even really know how to relate to women because there's something running in the background that's, that's feels so yucky and so unhealthy. And so 
I think even Mordecai's just love for for Esther, his love. You know, Paul says in the New Testament, Paul says, you know, treat women like sisters and mothers and 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 daughters. And so there's nothing sexual, you know, when you think about a six a sister or or a mother or a daughter. And so I, I really think men getting healthy. I, I know I'm rambling, so I'd love you to jump in and hear, I want to hear your thoughts on this. But I think men getting healthy sexually and men getting everything out into the light and starting to walk walk in, in integrity, it massively releases the woman um, into her voice, into her destiny, her calling, because she feels safe now. She's like, okay, I have discernment. I'm not crazy. You know, I know the truth. My husband and I, we're in, we're in unity. We're in intimacy. And um, because of that, I feel strengthened to to really go after what God's what God's called me to go after. So the, those are some thoughts that I have of, of yes. kind of, man, you know, we talk about what's a man's man's role. I think man's role is to get healthy. Yeah, it really is. I was thinking, and, yeah, it really is like get, getting, oh, finding, I, I think this all comes more natural than we understand. Um, like the grace is there. 100%. For me to do exactly what they're to do, as long as they are sitting, you know, I, I've been through tons of healing and the hardest part about healing is sitting in it, right? It's everybody can relate to when mom took the hydrogen peroxide, when you fell off the bike, you scraped your knee and she has to put that awful stuff in it that makes it sting, right? It's like why, my kids always just wanted a band aid over everything with all the dirt and the rocks and everything. They wanted all of that inside and they just wanted a band aid because, in their mind, a band aid now we can't see it and a band aid makes it better. Every kid thinks a band aid heals, right? Well, what heals is to get, their, to get the infection out. And so um, that's why uh, getting inside this, in fact, I'm going to put this up right now to, to really enter into a upgrade in your marriage into a healed marriage and a healed self. I I'll say it and I'll keep on saying it that I don't know very many people that can do this job with so much anointing as Ben and Heather. And I, I'm, I'm just, I just believe it because I've watched it and I've seen the fruit. I've seen couples come out the other side of it and get a whole new lease on life. And one of the things that you do, Ben, that I love so much is you help people go through their timeline. You help them slow down, sit inside their life, which is really uncomfortable because it's like, I don't like what I've done in my life. I've messed up. I've made oh. mistakes. It's icky, right? Yeah. Like we just shut the door. Yeah. The closet holds all the stuff. Like my kids cleaned the room the other day and I went in the closet and did the slider and it was like clothes <laughs> come out of the closet. And anyway, that's kind of what we do, right? We're like, oh, look, look at my clean life here. But what's so neat is if I hired an organizer, professional organizer to come to my house, I'm going to hire them because I have spaces. I don't know how to organize and they're just really chaotic, right? But somebody's going to come in and be like, okay, we're going to put this bin here. We're going to do this. What, what is this for? Do you need this anymore? Okay, let's throw that out. They're going to clean up areas that cause yeah. me stress and chaos. This is what they're, they're like professional organizers for marriage. That's what Ben and Heather do. Now you're going to have to do the work right? Like a professional organizer comes in, they set up the system and then it's up to your family to use the system. Like they can't make you put the, you know, a three-year-old to, to put a bar wrapper in the garbage. Like that would be on you, right? But they're going to at least set you up to win, to get the system at least in order so that you're not just functioning in chaos. And I believe that the family unit is under such assault. This really is about the family that our nation is experiencing. And the enemy knows if I can get the, the couple to hate each other, oh, to man. survive with each other, to be offended at each other, to be roommates. Okay. Yes. I'm just going to even get them functioning at a like ground zero level. If I can do that, then I'll keep them in survival mode. And then their children and them will never have a fighting chance to go build the kingdom because building the kingdom is like, I have to actually be able to have eyes to see problems to solve outside of my own life. 
And if the enemy can get us under so much chaos and stress, our eyes go inward. We only look yes. at us. We only look at our family. We're not even caring what God is doing on the earth. We're just in survival mode. And I'm telling you, if this is where you have to back the truck up, like you might be like, I want to start an orphanage. I want to write a book. I want to do these things. But you look at your marriage and it smells like rotten fruit or rotten food or rotten garbage. You know what? That book is coming, but you don't want to write a book out of that root system. Because you know what? Your language will be different. It will actually feel different. It'll sound different. So back it up, slow yeah. down, speed up, get the marriage figured out. And you know what? This could be like eight weeks. I'm not saying like the next 15 years. I'm saying what would happen if you just open the closet and go, okay, let everything fall out. And now you have a professional there who's not emotionally attached to the mess. That's the issue is we don't want other people to look at our mess because we actually think they're going to be emotional about it. No, it's us that's emotional about it. So you have people come in that are not emotionally connected, but they have tools, but they're like, oh yeah, I remember my closet looked like this too. Okay. So what's what we're going to do? We're going to do over this. Gonna... And you're just sitting there in complete relief going, oh, thank God somebody's helping me. Yes. You know? But if that takes humility. And, but here's what we're talking about, Ben. We're talking about discipleship. Yeah. Right? Like God said that people have to be discipled. He doesn't just zap us with a salvation prayer. And then all of a sudden we're good to go. Everybody knows that once you gave your life to Christ, things got maybe even more chaotic, right? Yeah. Because the enemy just started beating you. So let's do this. Let's come under the word of God that says to seek wise counsel. It says to seek wise counsel. This is wise counsel. So I'm just, I'm just pressing you guys. Let's go after the things of God in a healthy way. And here's the other way that men can be involved in a practical way. Let's talk about July. Let's just talk about July just to make it super practical. Yeah. Number uh, one, pray. No, or do you number, have, do you have yeah. here? What's that? Do you have something here? Oh, oh, you're going off your list. I thought, okay, yes. Yeah, you go. You Either go. way. Um, and, and add to this or whatever. But the, the three things I thought of was okay. that yes. men going into July pray. Like pray for us, pray that there's 5,000 praying women in that room and the, and the men also pray for the ministers, pray that there's an anointing that, that chains break it. Like it just breaks off and, and just pray for us, pray for your family, pray for your church, pray for your church leaders. Like just get involved in prayer. That was the first one, by the way, prayer hubs are not just for women. They're for men too. We just keep track of the women. We let the women lead with um, the administrative piece, with get on the calendar, but men get involved in these prayer hubs. The second thing is show up, come. It's yes. absolutely free of charge. You do need to register so we can keep track of numbers, but register, get in the room, sit with a couple other guys or sit with your wife or sit with your teenage daughter that's there. I mean, just get in the room. And then the third one, Ben, what did I text you? I'm forgetting now what I texted you. Cause I, I said these three things. Uh, uh, speak up, tell the ladies to use their voice and power courage. Yeah. Which is what we covered, right. Is, is men coming along women and saying, you know, I don't totally understand what God's asked you to do necessarily, but um, I totally agree that you, you know, you talked about doing that prayer hub or you talked about throwing that Bible study, or you talked about getting some girls together for a weekend and I've been thinking about that. I think you should do it. I think you're yeah, going to change we, women's lives. We we can also we can also help to facilitate those things as men. We can we can yes. you know what I mean. I'm I'm saying like we're Fun. we <laughs> and 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 as a, as a man we we cannot um, we cannot manipulate. Um, we have to be able to speak. You know, in in a marriage relationship, going back to marriage again, we have to be able to to say what we say and mean like mean what we say, right? And so. Um, I think what a man can do is like, is really say, man, honey, I believe, I believe in what you're doing. I, be I believe in this. I believe in what you're doing. And so I, I am so grateful that you get to go to Portland to be a part of this. And, you know, and maybe they're, they're staying back with the kids and that I'm just telling you that that is a ministry in and of itself. That's a, that is. is a powerful ministry in and of itself. And, and, um, but not using it as leverage not using it as leverage, not using it for any way to manipulate or to stonewall or to, you know, using any of the tactics that, that we as men um, can tend to use, um, you know, in an, unrede in an unredeemed state. So, so man, champion, cheer on. If you're a pastor, um, 
give your, in fact, the other day I was like, you know what? I probably need to have some more men talk at church because I, I am, I am so pro, I'm so pro women speaking and sharing and, and cause I just, I love seeing, I love their testimonies. I, I love seeing what God is doing in the collective church, you know, th through the women. So. Yeah, you've been absolutely incredible about that. And so, well, we, you know, one of the things that women can do here is you can send this, uh, ask them to watch part of this um, broadcast today and to say, hey, will you take a look at this? And ladies, what you can tell your men is, this is what I told Lou Engle the other day when we're talking about Washington, D.C. Okay, because we're talking about going to Washington, D.C., the great miracle of a million plus women and a million plus men. But this is what I told Lou Engel. I said, this is kind of what I've resolved in my spirit is I don't want to do it without Lou because his voice is the Mordecai. He's shooting this thing out. I don't want to do it without my husband. I've told my husband that I don't want to, I don't want to do it without you. I can't do it without you actually. And I also don't want to do it without Gen Z. I don't want to go after something so important for the nation, turn this thing around in a couple decades or however long it's going to take. And then my kids kind of sat and thought, oh, they're cool. They did a couple of meetings. No, I want them to know about prayer hubs. I want them to have a, a uh, I want them yeah. in on the process because we're eventually not going to be here and they're going to have a nation to lead and their kids are going to have a nation to lead. So I don't want to not train them. I think it'd be a huge disservice to leave them out of the process because they're the ones that are going to be leading, right? That just makes sense. Like that you build you, you, you take the next generation with you so they know how to do this. I, I want to share a um, testimony real quick, and then let's just prophesy over some people, Ben, that are on here. Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share another part of July that is really cool that many of you might want to be a part of. Um, but I'm going to share this testimony. So, you know, when people ask, what is to tell us, what's her voice? In one, in one phrase, let me tell you what our goal is. We are a prayer movement. Okay, I just want to settle that really quick. We are a prayer movement. So when we have books, resources, we have this event coming up in July, we have these, you know, in intensives and great things. All of that is training and equipping, but the foundation of it is a prayer movement because we know that none, none of this can be sustained without prayer. The nation can't be turned around without prayer. The family can't be turned around without prayer. The marriage can't be upgraded without prayer. The freedom people experience can't be held. Like freedom can be lost. You can get free from demonic oppression and that can come right back. But with prayer, it's all solidified. And so we know that we're a prayer movement. So last July, we planted prayer hubs and we're asking everybody, can you gather at least one other person for one hour once a month? That would be a minimum requirement to say you're a prayer hub. You know, we give you access to our files. It's absolutely free. So I want to share with you just a, one of the many testimonies that I get. And it just blessed me so much. And here's what happened. A friend that I was actually in a, in a, in a business transaction with, I was helping her with some nutrition stuff. And she ended up coming to an event, right? So we had an event. She came to it. She got her life rock. She's a single mom. And then guess what? She decided to plant a prayer hub out of that event. So I'm kind of sharing with you how this narrative of how this ministry works. So she goes and plants a prayer hub. And once a month, she drags her 15 year old daughter to all these prayer hubs once a month. And she doesn't give her daughter a choice, right? Like you're coming to this, just like when they don't want to go to school, you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Get your shoes on, you know, and she takes her to the prayer hub. And she's in several months of this. Well, she just got a text from her daughter and I asked permission to share this anonymously, but her daughter said, this is, and I saw the text. She copied and pasted it to me. Her daughter said in so many words, she said, mom, a year ago, I came to you and said that I like girls. And you simply said back to me, no, this is not your identity. And this is not God's destiny over you. And then you made me go to those prayer gatherings. But somehow I now am feeling like God does love me. And I'm actually thinking that he does have a destiny for me. Thank you for being strong with me. 
Thank you for taking me to your prayer meetings, which was her prayer hub. And sorry that I called them dumb. <laughs> you know? So here's her. And, and she sent this to me sobbing. And she's a single mom. Think about that. Think about being a single mom. Your 15-year-old or 14-year-old at the time comes to you and says, I like girls. And you're like, no, you don't. And you're just trying to do the right thing for your kid, right? She was covering her. She was using authority. But her daughter says, getting in those prayer meetings, something happened to her heart. What prayer does is it connects us to the heart of God. And all of a sudden, we start caring about what God cares about. That's why prayer hubs are so awesome. And by the way, you don't have to have a prayer hub just connected with us. You can do what the Bible says, which is Matthew 18, 19 through 20, that says, where two or more gather in my name and ask me for something, I will do it. So you don't have to be technically a prayer hub, but maybe you want our 30 prayer points sent to you. Maybe you want to be in our app where we have a chat for your state. And what we do in our chat group is we send like legislation stuff. We send like, hey, you know, Governor Inslee for the state of Washington, they just put out this deal and we need to call the phone lines and we need to sign this thing and we need to stop this bill from going through. And guess what? A whole bunch of people got to use their voice in legislation where they otherwise would have been like, what happened? What was signed? I didn't even know about it. I didn't even know how to do it. So we we kind of connect those dots through our prayer hub. And like I said, it's absolutely free. But if you don't want to be connected to what we're doing, please go pray anyway. Go put it on your calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it's probably not going to get done. Find a friend to pray with. If you're a mother, you already have a prayer hub. It's called your family. Pull your family together. Pull out the prayer points. Get the coloring sheets for the little ones. Start coloring. We're going to pray. Say amen. Let's get some communion on the table. Like it's super easy. It is not difficult. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I do want to pray for a couple of people. We have a couple of minutes to give some prophetic words. One more thing, though, before we do that. And Ben, I'm just going to shoot it to you. Um, and you can give a corporate word or you can give one specifically to somebody out there. But um, this is what I want to announce. And we haven't announced this yet. We are doing something very, very special at Her Voice on the 13th is a Thursday. What we're going to do is we're going to assemble a breakfast. OK, it's called the Vision Breakfast. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to call people together who are leaning in and saying, okay, there's a vision here. There's something going on. There's a movement of women, the Mordecai's. I'm starting to kind of get clarity around this, but I really want an impartation. I really want to come into this conversation in a more concentrated way. So we have Patricia King. We have Lou Engel. We have Callie Gray. We have the Liberatories. They're going to be coming and talking about the vision of not just her voice, that will be there too, but also Washington and what does this look like to go to the mall? If you want to be in that conversation and have breakfast with us, you're going to need to register to get a ticket. Now, if you're an underwriter, if you became an underwriter with us, which was a one-time donation of $5,000 or more, we are sending you an email here really soon and we are inviting you into this breakfast without a charge. That breakfast is free for you. But for those of you that want to be in the breakfast, you're not an underwriter. You can, of course, still become an underwriter. You can go to our website and give that way. But if you are not an underwriter and you want to be in that meeting and have breakfast with us, go ahead and go to our website, hervoicemovement.com, and purchase your ticket to come to the breakfast. Now, the room is only so big. So we only have, I can't remember how many we can seat. I think it's like 100 or something. Okay, and we already have about... 70 underwriters. So we have room for about 30 people to purchase their ticket. That's not very many people because right now there's even 108 people on here. So let me share this with you. The tickets are $125. Um, I will tell you right now that only a few of those dollars actually go to our ministry because guess what? Catering. If you want your mind to be blown, look at a hotel catering price menu. Whoa. So anyway, it is what it is and it's totally fine. And the breakfast is going to taste amazing. Um, so you're coming in and just paying for the cost of being in the room. And we just appreciate you so much. If you really feel, especially if you are leading a church or an organization, if you have a ministry and you want to figure out how to mobilize um, the women and men in your group into something that is just greater moving to Washington, D.C., then I would highly recommend that you get a ticket, come in, get an impartation for the vision so that you can share that with 
your organization. Okay. So go to her voice movement for that. So pastor Ben, what do you got here with prayer, prophetic words? What's happening? Well, let me ask you this, Jenny. I want you to answer this. Um, because you know, if a man's like, okay, well, I'm, I want to come to her voice, you know, first of all, they have to know that it's, they got to get around a little bit of a marketing issue. Um, right. And know that you're like, they're invited. Yes. Number two, Number two, what I've, what I've heard in the comments is, is, well, what can I do? What can I do? And what would you say to that? Can, can men come and just yep. attend or do they have to be, have a role or be doing something? No, nope. they can just sit there and grab the vision, just like the female sitting next to them or whatever. Um, they can also come to the breakfast so that they can grab the vision there. We um, don't look at men as secondary we just know that they're the bow, right? There's the arrows yeah. of the women being shot out. They're going to be shot out into school board and the men are too, you know, that's going to all happen. But as far as being at the event itself in the past, we've had men volunteer because that was so helpful. And now we're saying, come take up one of the 5,000 seats, sit yeah. there, grab the vision, grab a healing for yourself and your family so that you can go back and you and your spouse or you and your pastors or whatever, you guys have a solid vision of what God is going to do through you, your family or your organization. So I don't know if that answers the question, but we want you in the room. It's not even your welcome. It's like, we want you there. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I just, I just think clearing, you know, clearing all those things up so you can take that message back to the men uh, in your life, I think is huge. Yes. Totally. And we're going to be there. Bob's going to be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a blast. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just pray. Uh, there's somebody on here on YouTube until Jesus returns. Let me just pop this up here. I'm waiting on a word from the Lord about my health. Um, I, I'm just going to pull from the word of God and say, by his stripes, you were healed. That's the word I'm going to give you. And your healing took place at Calvary and I just see your body right now receiving the love of God. Put your body in receptive mode. You know, it's so interesting when somebody hands you a gift out of the blue and it's not your birthday, it's not Christmas. And they're like, I just got this for you. Like it's that moment that can feel kind of awkward. Like, oh my gosh, that was really nice. And you, you almost feel like, what can I do for you? Like we need to even this thing out, right? But there's something about just receiving and I see that for you. I see you receiving, receiving, not struggling by faith, not striving by faith, but the faith part is I agree that God wants to, that he already gave me healing and he doesn't want me to suffer and he's a good dad and dads take care of always. Dads take care of broken bones. Dad take, takes care of my body when it's not working right. And so I receive that. And I just want you to look, even look at the cells of your body as receiving. So sometimes people, and I'm not saying this is you, I'm just going to kind of teach on this on a tangent, but sometimes people kind of have their spirit fold in their arms, like their spirit is folding their arms and they've been hurt a lot in life. And they've held people at a distance, right? Because they've been hurt by people. And what that does, that, that heart posture actually takes the cells of your body and closes them up. And we be, we're not a flower that's open anymore. We're like closed. And so here comes the healing power of God, but there's no like reception because it's closed. And so what we have to do is come into a place of forgiving the people who've hurt us, opening our heart opening our mind and saying, God, I open my heart to you. I open my mind to you. I allow your spirit to integrate with my spirit, with my soul, with my body. So we can't hug somebody with our arms out like this. That's kind of my point, right? We have to kind of, I, I remember going through a time where, man, there was so much betrayal and deception, just so much that I was like, okay, everybody. Hi, I love you. Love you. You're all great. You're all great from, from here. And I remember going, okay, Jenny. Okay. Your arm. Okay. Bend. <laughs> like coaching myself through trusting people again, 
because I was a little girl that had gotten hurt by some things. And now I had to like risk getting hurt all over again. So I'm just going to say to everybody on here that wants healing, that needs healing is let's just, maybe you need to go like this and then just tell your elbow bend. God is safe. He's your protector. He is your covering. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to hold yourself up. Let the Holy Spirit hold you. Let the Holy Spirit um, guide you. Let the Holy Spirit cover you. And hopefully right now you're sensing the openness, like see yourself maybe as a flower that's beginning to open and then just receive the love of God, receive the healing power of the Lord. All right. Amen. Anything you got there, Pastor Ben? Um, I just want to, I, I just feel like praying. And um, there's some people right now that are reaching out and they're frustrated there, with um, kind of where, maybe where their marriage is at, where their, where their husband's at, you know, in this. Okay. And so I, I, I want to pray um, for them. And I just, I feel like there's, there's so much hope right now. And, you know, the Lord wants to, to bring y'all into alignment. Again, this is not, this is not a flesh and blood battle. This is a spiritual battle. You know, your, your husband is not the enemy. Husbands, your wives aren't, is not the enemy. Uh, the enemy is the enemy. That's right. And so I, I just, I want to pray. I want to speak life. And I believe God's going to give you a strategy, you know, and obviously it's, it's going to be uh, bathed in prayer and rooted in prayer, but also a strategy on, on how to do this and on, on how to, here, here's the other thing is, is we can't be, we can't live in codependency and codependency says, you know, peace at any price. I'm only happy if they're happy. One of the one of the most powerful things that, that we can do as individuals is regardless of whether or not my spouse is going after the Lord, I'm going to go after Jesus and I'm going to um, I was going to say work on me. That sounds very <laughs> worldly, but really, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to work on me. I'm going to, um, you know, do things that are going to promote health and healing, spiritual health, spiritual healing in my in my own life. And what we've seen so often is, is as one of the spouse does that, the other spouse like begins to get on board because really they see the changes and they see the evidence and the fruit right. in that. And it gives them permission. So I want to pray. Praise God. Yeah. Lord, I, I thank you. Um, Father, we thank you right now for these women you, that are on this, on this live stream right now. God, I just pray, Father, where there's uh, any strongholds in the thinking. God, that you would remove those right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers every marriage, every relationship. Maybe it's with your son. Maybe it's with your husband where there's just been no hope. And you, and you feel like, man, I just, they're not interested in things of God. They're not interested in spiritual things. They're not, this is not even the, the right language. They're not leading our home spiritually. Well, right now, Lord, we just pray you remove every obstacle every obstacle in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for a prayer strategy. I thank you, God, that even right now you're breaking things open. Father, I thank you right now that you are going ahead. You're going before us. You're going before them. And right now, where, wherever God the spouse is right now, God, I just pray that you would touch them, that you would send angels ahead right now to even till the heart, to till the soil, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we just speak marriage is restored marriage is healed. We pray that men would be engaged, that men would, would grab the bow and, and would, would partner with the Holy Spirit, partner with what God is doing on the planet to see our wives be everything, God, that you have called them to be. Lord, we speak, God, I just speak over every past wounding, every pa uh, past trauma that's kept voices closed, that's kept women on eggshells, every bit, bit of manipulation that's been used against them. Father, I just speak women over you, women, that you have discernment. You hear the voice of God. You know the voice of God. You, you walk with the Lord. His word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. And I, I bless you as a man. I bless you in Jesus' name to let your voice be heard and to be that tune trumpet that carries the sound of God that God has for you in your generation to, 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 to proclaim in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, that's so powerful. Ladies, I'm seeing some people on here, like I just put up Rachel Ding's comment. 
I remember when Rachel was like, Jenny, what do I do? You know? And, um, she prayed, she prayed, she got out of her flesh, out of her like mind. And she just said, father, God come. And now her husband is fire. He is on track with God. I just want to testify that because that is the prophecy of Jesus. And I also write here before we end today, I cannot end without us all just shooting our faith right at this right here. Alina said that pray for my sister, Abby. She ran away from home. Can we all right now, yeah. everybody in mind and every, right here, can we just say, Abby, let's use our authority. Abby, come home. Abby, come home. Come home. We, we, we call you home. And home is to the heart of God and it's to the people who can take care of you and the people who love you. And we ask you, Jesus, that you would sever her from the strategy of hell, from the strategy of the demonic realm, sever it right now, that every single uh, strategy would fall to pieces in this very moment. It would crumble to ash right now. And we thank you, Lord, for sending angels to arrest her and bring her back to a place of safety and a place of healing. In Jesus' name, we ask you to prepare the people who are going to receive her back, that there yeah. would be such grace for them to love her because love covers a multitude of sin. You know, my kids last night, they were just at each other all day. And we came home and said, okay, we got to work this out. And we talked through it. They had to apologize, that kind of thing. But we ended with them hugging a 15-year-old and an 18-year-old. And we had them hug. And I told them the reason I want you to hug with a genuine love for each other, because you do love each other, but because love covers a multitude of sin and you guys have hurt each other and um, that's sin and sin hurts people. But you know, what's greater than sin is love. So I want you to hug each other and I want you to do it with a genuine heart. So right now I just see love surrounding Abby covering yeah. sin that has hurt her, that has wounded her. And we call Abby into her God-given destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Awesome. Hey, Pastor Ben, thank you for being here today. This has been awesome. And yeah, um, so we good. bless you guys. You guys, make sure you hit their course, okay? Acrosstheisland.com. Make sure that you do that. You might be like, my marriage is like an eight. We're doing really good. I don't need that. You know, it could be a, it could be a, a nine or a 10. It could be not even that you're having problems, but you just get some tools for greater intimacy, but the family's under assault right now. So I don't have very many people telling me that they're, they're doing awesome. So hey, anyway. And Jenny, if, if, yes. if, if a husband has questions about the event, have them reach out to myself or Bob or one of the guys. And, and we would love to, uh, to talk with them about it. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys can go to Ben Rose on um, direct messaging Facebook or Instagram, or even yeah. Robert Donnelly is my husband, Robert, Robert Donnelly. You can go to them too. And they'd be, they would love to be able to talk with them and really bring yes. clarity and vision and purpose because men don't want to be purposeless. They just want to sit there without a purpose. They want to know they have a role to play and they really do. And God will speak to them about that. So reach out if it's, if it's helpful and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Pastor Ben. God bless you. We'll Thanks, talk to Jenny. you guys soon. You're welcome. Bye-bye everybody.